caper Bob Dobbs with the Rock Castle Karst Conservancy is unlocking the Great Saltpeter Cave for us. It takes around a million years for water to dissolve a cave this large. With 3,500 feet of passage, it goes through the mountain and runs under Highway 1004. It's about a half mile walk from end to end. In most places, it's like walking along a dark country road. You could have brought your vehicle in here and parked it in an echo auditorium. But not everywhere. It's about a 20-foot slide down into a passage right there. You get dirty. That's a dead end. We're now entering Fat Man Squeeze. This is not. It's uh, most people's favorite part of the cave. More on this narrow maze in a bit, but first, the cave's recent history. The cave was first discovered by a white man. Uh, in 1798. It quickly became a valuable resource. During the war 1812, they worked uh, as many as 170 people here. Mining niter from the cave's dirt to make gunpowder. Thus its name, the Great Saltpeter Cave. It outproduced Mammoth Cave by 30 percent. After the war of 1812, mining here diminished to an off-and-on venture. <laughs> In 1939, John Lair, founder of the Renfro Valley Barn Dance, began turning the cave into a tourist attraction. He was the one who leveled the floor out. He made the steps and the bridges. The sporadic efforts, which continued through the 1960s, even included the obligatory ghost story. Supposedly a slave was buried here, and this is haunted. So this is called Booger Branch. The claim easily debunked. The grave was really... Uh, a mound of dirt left from the saltpeter mining. Tourism could not keep the gates open. Nowadays, the Conservancy owns, manages, and preserves the great saltpeter cave. Elementary field trips teach the next generation. All those kids are paying attention. Going back to nature and taking care of what we have, uh, being good stewards of the land. A cave full of fun lessons. Yeah, most often it's right here in this little area. Yeah. Walking through a hollow pipe. While the serious spelunkers still search for the next discovery. We still suspect there is probably some lower passages that we haven't found. The cave's biggest room, Echo Auditorium, is enough for the rest of us. Uh, yes, it goes pretty good. We welcome you to the Renfro Valley Barn Dance, so come right on in. Let's all have a big time tonight. Occasionally, this was a unique concert hall for the Renfro Valley Barn Dance. <laughs> In 1996, it morphed into a movie set. That's why I'm not going to kill you. Randall, you do it. They were on site for three months and spent about $350,000 here filming basically in this room. Big fight and explosion scene. Can you hear this, Daddy? Near the end of Fire Down Below, starring Steven Seagal was filmed here. He wasn't a caver. <laughs> For cavers, the allure is what millions of years can create. This is called the Russian Dome. It's the cave's highest, warmest spot. And it's also one of the few places in a cave you'll see some formations. You see some stalactites over there and a wall of flowstone. As we get ready to leave this cave with its remarkably smooth yet amazingly sculptured walls, we weave one last time through Fat Man's squeeze. A big part of it is historic. To see signatures from centuries past. It was customary for uh, caves, commercial caves, to have a spot in the cave where people could put their initials. Even Mammoth Cave had a spot like that at one time. We call that graffiti nowadays. Fortunately, the Great Saltpeter Cave is now protected for generations to come. With photographer Paul Majonier, this is Greg Stottlemyre on Kentucky's Backroads.